and Abbasan, what was your inspiration? What, uh, what, what brought you into games? What made you want to be a game maker? So uh, it was probably, I was around 12 years old, and uh, what you would now call a PC, uh, my friend had one. And uh, of course, at the same time, there were like uh, different arcade games and stuff that you could play at the arcade. But being able to play a game at someone's house was mind blowing uh, at the time. And then when I found out you could actually program, make your own games using this PC device, uh, was such an inspiration to me uh, as a child that I very quickly uh, poured all my time and energy into making my own games, into programming, uh, into um, learning that craft. Um, and ever since then, uh, I've always wanted to uh, work on games. When did you decide that Platinum was going to be your new direction and you wanted to create this company? It wasn't actually I uh, that formed the company. That uh, initially was um, uh, Inaba-san and some other people. And Inaba-san said to me, hey, we're going to be doing this new company. Um, we'll be able to do a lot of new, cool and creative things. We'd really like you to be a part of it. Um, so him uh, inviting me was the core reason why uh, I decided to join. And certainly the idea of, of having more creative freedom of a whole new world of game development was one of the most exciting, appealing things uh, that probably made me want to join the company. You had team members and colleagues that had, uh, you know, security working with big companies like Capcom and uh, working on big franchises and launching big things. I'm, I'm wondering how it, it was received by your peers and your friends working in the video game community in Japan when you were going off on your own and going independent and launching this brand new studio. Were you nervous telling the world? I remember the, uh, the San Francisco event when you came to tell us all about Bayonetta and the launch of Platinum Games. Were you nervous or was it, did you feel like everybody was excited and supportive? How, how was it for you back then? So, of course, leaving the, uh, the comfort of a, a large publisher and then starting your own independent company uh, can be very scary. And there's lots of different fears. There's the fear of what if we make a game that doesn't sell or people don't like. Uh, there's the fear of what if the company um, goes bankrupt. And there's all these talented creators that we have to feed and that have families and, and now they're out on the street. And all those pressures, those anxieties, those fears, uh, you definitely feel whenever you start a new endeavor like a, a new independent um, developer, certainly in Japan. Um, however, trying to play it safe just doesn't work in the game industry. If you're somebody that wants to rid yourself of anxiety and you want to rid yourself of fear and you just want a stable, safe, happy job, you shouldn't be in games. That's the long and short of it. So that's a part of the risk that comes with making video games, is you have to put yourself out there. And there was never a time, even considering all the different uh, things that could go wrong or the fear that I had, that this wasn't the choice uh, that we absolutely needed to make. So, um, you know, there'll always be those fears uh, that you have to deal with, but um, you have to take risks in order to be able to achieve something great. What was the philosophy for Platinum Games? What did you want to create? out of this company and what were you know some of the messages that you wanted to send out into the world of game development so you would attract the top talent so ever since uh, forming platinum games uh, for me personally it's about being able to make new things original uh, experiences. It's probably because myself uh, as a person, I get bored pretty easily. <laughs> so there's always a desire to do something new, to, to push the envelope, to, to create something original. And 
again, because I'm a bit greedy, uh, it wouldn't just be one title, it would be multiple titles, doing multiple lines, multiple production lines, doing original new things um, that hadn't been done before. That was always the goal when making the company. It's something we continually strive for. Um, and uh, I think even today, that's probably one of the things that attracts some of the top talent to us as a company, is they see that we're not stuck in the same cycle of making the same game over and over again, that we're constantly doing new uh, original type of experiences and sometimes things that we had never tried before, kind of not even platinum games like in the past. How do you describe your role here at Platinum Games and how much has your job kind of evolved since your days at Capcom? So my current role is the chief game designer here at Platinum Games. And what that entails is, while I still direct my own project, basically I'm looking at all the different titles that are being created at Platinum, making sure that the quality is there, the polish is there. Sometimes if there are teams that need help, I will come in and provide some additional advice uh, or some design theory for them. So largely it is looking over the whole company from a design perspective. Of course, when I was at Capcom, I would be the director of one project and I would focus fully on that. And while those days were uh, incredibly fun, I still find the current job that I do very rewarding in so much as Platinum Games has a ton of very talented, unique, original creators, and I get to help them grow as designers, directors, etc. And being able to watch over all these very talented, younger creators really come into their own as designers and directors, it's a great feeling. And I'm quite sure that there'll be uh, a future where when they've all reached their maximum potential, then I'll be able to go back to my projects and focus solely on them because uh, I won't need to uh, support them to that level anymore. Take us into your career at Platinum. And obviously as one of the co-founders and the people that organized, you had a lot of other things to think about, but what have you been working on over the years? What games have you helped to make and, and how do you differentiate how much of yourself you give in, give to the game and give to the company? So probably the first five years of being at Platinum, my role wasn't much different than what it was at Capcom, was as a producer looking over multiple production lines, making sure the projects uh, were of high quality, got out the door, etc. However, after about five years, I was looking at so many different lines that I couldn't do it all by myself, and then eventually gravitated to a more management role where you're overseeing at a higher level different projects. And if there's probably a couple key focuses that I grow into, it would be one be a business development sort of piece to my role, in which case, you know, there's lots of different offers, different IPs we can work with, different um, types of games, maintaining those relationships, basically trying to strategize what are the games that we do, don't do, what fits for the company, doesn't fit, etc. All those different pieces are something that uh, I need to look at. And Certainly, if a project is going to be new, original, have more complicated structure to it, uh, that's something that I'll put more of my time and energy into. But it's more a, I'll look at different projects at different times in the production that require more of my energy to spin up or to fix if there's problems, etc. And then I will fade out and go on to something else. Um, so there's a larger portion of my time that's in management and that's in doing specific roles for all the different titles rather than being attached to one title from the very beginning to the very end like I used to. Um, but I can say there's still plenty of chances to be creative. There's still plenty of things to work on, being able to chase after that originality, new titles, etc. None of that's changed. So my passion towards my job, even though there's more management to it than there was before hasn't changed in the slightest. I still love it. You have so many strong directors here and so many strong leaders that have worked on different fantastic franchises and games, but how do you decide, you know, what direction 
and what games you're going to work on internally. Is there a, a process for that? And how do you put that together? So for us at Platinum Games, the process for deciding what sort of titles we want to make as a team is largely up to the passion of the director and the team uh, around that director. It's not like Platinum Games comes in and says, what's best for Platinum Games? It's people that make these games. And so if there's a director that has a very interesting concept and he feels very, or they feel very passionate about it, and there's a team that also feels very passionate about it, that's the sort of idea or concept that we want to support as a company. Of course, we're known for making action games, and naturally the staff gravitates in that direction, but we're still a very open-minded company. So if one day some creator comes and says, I really want to do an RTS, I really have this great idea for an RTS. We're still going to look at that, and if it looks like the passion is there and the team feels like, wow, we have something here, then even though we're known for action games, we'd go in a different direction uh, too. What was different about the video game industry prior to Platinum, and what has changed over your time with this company and, and the way that you guys look at, at the projects that you put together? As far as our creative spirit goes, uh, that has not changed a lot. Uh, that hasn't changed rather at all since uh, our days back at Capcom's Development Division 4. That was, of course, the, the core team that has now moved over to Platinum. We still have that same passion for game development. Uh, if there's one thing that has changed, uh, it's the fact that as an independent developer, you are fully focused on the development of games, uh, which is very different, of course, than working at a publisher. Uh, it also means that oftentimes you are working with an external publisher, and they're the ones that are funding the different titles, which means you may not have 100% creative freedom when uh, developing the game, whereas you have a lot more of that if you're working inside of a publisher sometimes. As we see with every independent production company and every independent uh, game developer out there, you have great days and great successes, but you also have a lot of hard days and big struggles. And I'm, I, I'm wondering if if you can tell us a little bit about maybe one of the hardest things that, that Platinum has had to face and, and how you got through that. I'm going to give you an example of one case in which we have overcome a difficult situation and another case where we couldn't, giving you real talk, as you put it, Vic. So the first case would be the PlayStation 3 version of Bayonetta. We had developed the original game on 360 hardware, and we had left the port up to a different company to do. The final quality of that was terrible. It was a port that left a lot of users very disappointed. And I make no excuses. In the end, it's our responsibility to oversee the quality, even of games that have been ported by other companies. And when that port was not great, that responsibility falls on us. But it led us to grow as a company in so much as we now have a much higher dedication to quality, to working with different partners, to making sure that sort of thing doesn't happen again. Because in the end, it's a relationship with the consumer, with the fans, that support our different work, and we need to make sure that we don't disappoint them, no matter what version of the game that comes out. The uh, second one, uh, and this is a harder one to say, would of course be Scalebound. With Scalebound, we were dreaming big. We were designing something amazing. However, sometimes you have a plan to make something great, and when you try to build it out, it doesn't go as you envisioned. Back then at the time, that was an incredibly aggressive original game design that I, Kamiya, fully believed in and really wanted to make as a title, but we didn't have the production ability to hit what that goal was. We obviously disappointed the fans. I myself disappointed myself by being unable to achieve those goals. But you have to look at all those failures as steps to the future, and while we did fail then, I think it's largely made us a stronger company in the now. So sometimes you have to learn those difficult lessons to become better designers for the future. So Platinum has already built a great collection of titles. And I have to ask, what was your favorite game that you worked on directly? What was your favorite game that you didn't work on directly, that one of your other colleagues kind of supervised? 
And is there a platinum game that you wish you worked on? So, actually, since joining Platinum Games, there's only been two titles that I've been the director of, fully been the director of. One is Bayonetta, and the other is uh, The Wonderful 101. Probably not just myself, but any creator would tell you it's impossible to choose one single game that is your favorite because they're like your children. And no parent is going to say, I like this child more than this other child. You like them all the same, and of course you like them a lot. So it's really an impossible question to answer. As far as your second question goes, I have been attached to both Bayonetta 2 and Astral Chain in a support capacity as a designer providing advice. With Bayonetta 2, it's special because, again, that's a sequel to an IP that I helped create. And so being able to be a part and, and really provide some very important design guidelines, advice, uh, guidance, etc., uh, has been a, a fantastic experience. Uh, on the other hand, Astral Chain, it's a very unique, innovative uh, project, product, that we feel stands on its own and is very different from anything else on the market. And so, very proud that Platinum was able to do something with that level of originality. It's quite different from anything we've done before. So I'm very proud of that. So, again, it's a very impossible question to choose which of the two uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm more proud of. Uh, as far as your third question, there are two ideas, two concepts that I really want to do. I feel very passionate about. And I think they're going to be great. But all I can say right now is just look forward to hearing more about it in the future. I won't ask you to pick your favorite game or your favorite child, but I, I would like to know what was the most fun game for you to participate in here at Platinum Games to make. Uh, you always ask the hard questions trying to, to make us choose just one game. <laughs> Um, I guess if there's one I would have to choose, it's probably Mad World. It's one of the first titles we released. And that's because obviously it's a SimCity sort of like visual design. And we had just, the team at Clover Studios had just done Okami, which of course is a game about peace, tranquility, uh, these very colorful colors that you're using, and then go to this really violent, dark, brutal world. The one thing the game taught me was that you can have that the violence and the brutality but still turn it into a really interesting game experience. So the visuals, that level of, of brutality doesn't have to mean that the game itself isn't deep or isn't a lot of fun. So there was a really unique learning for myself uh, when being on that title. I guess if I was going to say one other one, it would probably be The Wonderful 101 because that was the last game I collaborated with Kamiya-san on. And Kamiya-san and I both have very strong personalities, both very opinionated. We both have our own flow, what we think about games. And I would tell him, you know, we need this level of quality. And he would then come back to me and say, no, it needs to be higher in a different way. And so we really do riff off of each other, but it's also... A very painful experience because you're you're really pushing each other uh, in a direction towards excellence, but with that comes a lot of stress and and pain and pressure. And so, um, it's never an easy experience. Um, but even in the the pain of working with him to create an amazing game, uh, there's still a lot of fun that is had. And so, I guess if I'm going to choose a collaborative game. Uh, where I got to work with Kamiya, it would be the wonderful 101 is, is the one that I felt was a lot of fun. But, you know, there are, every single game is fun in, in its own way, so that's why these questions are so hard to answer. When you look over the, um, the library of titles that your company has made, is there a game or two that best exemplify what Platinum is all about in your mind? Maybe this sounds like I'm cheating, as far as a response goes, by not choosing a specific title. But for us, since we're always about pushing the envelope, since we're always about doing something new and creative, uh, and always growing and evolving our different games, for me, I think the next game, and then the next game after that, and then the next game after that, in any given point in time, is going to be symbolic of what a, a Platinum Games game is of what the soul of the company is. 
So since we're ever evolving, always changing, uh, it's the future that is going to be most symbolic of who we are. You know, Platinum is a legendary game company now. It's legendary. And, and it, you've, you've earned it every step of the way. I mean, every release has been just incredible. It's just been phenomenal to watch that growth and that progression. And as a fan, as a player, it's just been wonderful. But I'm, I'm wondering if, because you're, you're clearly someone that loves video games. First of all, why? Why do you love making video games? What's, what, what is it about this medium that, that makes you so excited to participate? I've always wanted to create games ever since I was a child, but I think probably one of the key turning points was I was 12 or 13, I was reading the predecessor to Famitsu, it's called Fami Maga here in Japan, and they had a crosstalk interview between uh, Miyamoto-san, Miyamoto Shigeru, and Endo Masanobu-san, who of course created Xavius, and I was impressed by the fact that it was people that were making games. Up until then, I was playing games as an end user, and just like, wow, these games are fun, but this really showed that behind the curtain, the creative curtain of making these games, it was the people that were actually developing them. That, for me, really pushed me in the direction of very seriously, you know, looking at games as developed by people and myself being a part of that. That philosophy kind of still influences me today, and by that I mean, if you look at how an end user or a fan plays a video game, if they play a game that disappoints them, then you've basically created a disappointment pointing uh, memory for them through the game that you made. However, if you create something that they really love, that's fun, you can potentially give them a really great experience and a great memory to have, very much like myself as a child playing those games. And so, for me, the core to my philosophy of game design is, if I was playing this game as an end user, would this be creating fun for me? Or would this not? And so I feel that designers have to always look at that perspective. Isn't it funny that the game industry continuously needs to remind itself that people make video games? And we see this transition happen a lot where a publisher or a, uh, a big game company gets bigger and bigger and reaches success. And then the people inside, the developers, say, well, wait, we, we are, are the people making it and we want to have a little more respect. And then they decide, no, nope, we're going to go off and start our own company. And we see that happen again and again. Platinum is so revered among the industry. If you ask a lot of game makers and a lot of game players who one of their favorite developers are, they're going to say Platinum Games. But I'm wondering who you would say. Who, who is your Platinum Games? Who do you like? that uh, is making video games on a consistent level at a quality that you really appreciate. For your first comment, uh, actually from, from this position, I understand why companies want to push the company first before the individual creator. And that's because, obviously, you want to make your brand name stand out. You want people to be able to recognize that, etc. But you don't want to be in a situation where there's one person known for creating a title and then that person leaves. And now it gives the impression that that company can no longer make that IP, which may not be the case. So there are certainly risks to putting a lot of emphasis on the people and not on the company, uh, and I understand why that happens. That being said, Platinum Games is a company that we do cherish the individual creators that work here. Uh, we do want people to know them on a personal level. They are the lifeblood of the company, so we're comfortable. Uh, with our creators being, you know, being known for the different works that they've been a, a part of. It's not just me, it's it's all these other creators and other designers, and they need to be able to say, hey, I worked on this thing, and, you know, it's a part of me. That's important to us as a company. As to your last question, I have lots of very talented designer, developer, creator friends. It's hard to just pick one person because recently the things I've been thinking about is I, I look at I'm not familiar necessarily with all the company names or all the exact individuals uh, that are part of the different titles, but there are so many amazing titles that are being released, very popular, very incredible looking games. And I look at them and I'm like, I could never design this. And so when I think about that, it just makes me realize how amazing the game industry is, just how much talent is out there 
So it's hard to just pick a single name out of a hat and say it's this, that, or the other thing because there's so much talent and it's, it keeps getting better and better as time goes on and it's stuff that I can't do. So uh, for me, the answer is the game industry in general is pretty impressive. What is the future of Platinum? And how big of a company do you guys want to make it? And how many games at, at one time do you want to be building? And what can we expect? So for the future, it's not about having tons of people, it's not about having tons of titles, it's more about being able to make the games that we want to make. And so using Scalebound as an example, we didn't have the ability to be able to make the game, even though that was the game we wanted to make. So the goal is to make sure that we grow the company to the point where if we want to do a big title of that scale, scope, and size, that we'll have the people that are able to do it. And separate from that, if we want to do smaller titles like we've done in the past, we can also do that. So it needs to be about making the games that we want to make. And beyond that, we don't want to grow the company to be massive or have tons of titles. It's not about that. It's merely about being able to make the games we want to make. Can, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Platinum's move into uh, self-publishing and not just working on games and, and with partners, but now you're going to publish your own titles? When it comes to self-publishing, I mean, right now, we... Uh, at this exact point in time, we've never published anything uh, directly. So there's lots of uh, unknowns, um, quite frankly. But believe it or not, even when we formed Platinum Games, there was always a desire to self-publish because it allows you a direct interface with the fans, with the end user, uh, rather than going through the filter of some other company. And of course, there's tons of different risks that are involved. There's the money, the financial piece. There's the, are we going to be able to have some of the functionality of a publisher and be able to really do what the publisher does uh, and do it to the best of our ability? But all of those challenges are very much the same to your previous question of when we've informed Platinum Games, which is, yeah, there's fears, there's unknowns, there's uh, anxiety. What if we do self-publishing and it totally fails and we lose all this money and, again, we're, we're in a bad spot? All those risks are there. But anything worth doing, uh, it comes with risks. And this is going to be hopefully a natural evolution for us as a company. And having it direct pipe to the media, uh, to the fans, to be able to have the dialogue directly, um, that's what we want to be as a company. We don't want to have to go through another party uh, sometimes to convey what's in our hearts as creators. And this sets us up with the best possible chance to be able to do that. So it's my hopes, uh, Vic, that maybe 10 years down the line, you'll come back and interview us again, and we'll reflect. We'll look at the old clips, we'll reflect on this interview, and we'll go, so 10 years in the future, now you're a publisher, you've, you've self-published all these titles, it's going well. Uh, what do you think? And we'll be able to talk about uh, how that was the right decision at the time. Gambaritainatteu I ask you a couple more questions here. I don't want to forget. Will you sign my Nintendo Switch? You have helped to personally make three of my favorite Nintendo Switch games, and I would love it if you would be kind enough to sign the back of it. Would you? Sure. Yeah? Okay, cool. I'll give you that. Thank you. Yes, anywhere you'd like. Look at how cool that looks. That looks amazing. I love it. That is so cool. Look at that. That looks amazing. Thank you very much. Now, I noticed as we were walking around the halls, you have some very young game makers here. And the reputation of Platinum is very high. So what kinds of people do you look for when you, you know, what makes them right to be a Platinum employee?
So the sort of people that we're looking for at Platinum Games are going to be people that have the right judgment sense about where to push their ideas and how to take those ideas and adjust them accordingly to what the team needs. And so by that I mean most creators are pretty selfish. They have ideas, they want to make this kind of game, they want this sort of character, they, they have all those sort of ideas in their mind. And you need to have confidence as a creator. But you don't want to surround yourself with a team where if you say, hey, I want to make this game, everybody says yes. You don't want yes men in your team. You want people to look at your suggestion and then add to it, to add some idea or to say, hey, we should adjust it in this way. You want people to be proactive. You want their creativity to blend with the team's creativity and basically together as a team make what is the highest quality game that you can. Because when I surround myself with different people and I have my imagination of what the game will look like or be or whatever, and I suggest to the artist, hey, how about we do this sort of character? If the artist just says, yes, that's the sort of character we're going to do, we're not going to reach the max amount of quality. But if the artist comes back and says, oh, how about we add this to it, or how about we change the animation this way, that'll make it play better. That's where a team really shines, and that's where you can reach the maximum amount of quality. So the sort of people we're looking for, people that are proactive, that do have their own desires of the sort of games and stuff that they want to make, but can work within a team, and their ability can help maximize what is the quality of the team's output, rather than just say yes because their boss told them to. I have one last question, and it's kind of a selfish question because I love superheroes, and I, I loved Insomniac's Spider-Man game and, and uh, Rocksteady's Batman game. When I think of a developer that could make an awesome superhero video game, Platinum, I think, could make one. And so do you have a, a favorite superhero, and would you ever have an interest in, in uh, developing a superhero video game? So uh, there's obviously a huge hero, superhero boom that's uh, happening all around the world, and it's pretty amazing. From my perspective, though, as a young boy in Japan, I grew up watching Japanese hero TV shows and whatnot. So, you know, anything from like a, an Ultraman to a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, these are the sort of things that I saw and grew up watching and idolizing. And so if you look at my previous works, anything from like Beautiful Joe to even The Wonderful 101, I'm obviously getting inspiration from those childhood memories already. And one of the things I want to do in the future is a superhero-based game. It's pretty amazing, but it's also right now a secret. So I can't tell any more beyond that. <laughs> oh, Kamiya-san, this was amazing. Thank you so much. And continued success. And uh, you talked about, you know, creating great memories for people out there. I'm one of those people. Your games create great memories for me, so thank you very much. You've created a beautiful company, you know, and as a, as a fan and a, on behalf of the many fans that would love to be here with us right now, just thank you. Thank you for this entertainment and best of luck to, to you and to everybody at Platinum. <laughs> Thank you.